Oh, look at that! Oh, it's screaming. That is unbelievable. Oh, nice hit. Well done. Oh. Look at that. Not a bad sight. Oh, mate. Hi and welcome to Fishing WA. Today we're chasing the WA crayfish. That's right, the Western Rock Lobster. Such a popular thing to target. The what, where, how, why. We've got a great show lined up. Let's have a look. There is no doubt that the crayfish season every year is a popular one. These crustaceans have a very unique taste and can be caught using cray pots or if diving, a cray loop. Today we're launching from Woodman's Point Boat Ramp, which is located just south of Fremantle. The aim today is to head towards Rottnest Island and catch some tasty rock lobster, so let's get into it. Now, as per usual, Harry is nowhere to be found. No, just joking, he's actually on holidays right now, so I'm sort of semi-solo as far as doing the presenting, but I've got my good mate Frankie here, he's gonna help me out. So we normally cray pot together, so my pot's in the same sort of area. We'll go and pull his pots now, and may not even need to pull my pots, you never know. Yeah, Frankie, just pull up to your floats, mate. About to throw the actual grapple, but just realised, two sex there, Frankie, I'm just gonna put gloves on. Gloves are so handy for several reasons. One, for obviously gripping the rope when you need to, handling the cray pot, and definitely handling the cray. So, give you a bit more of a rundown about the apron and tools of the trade. In the meantime, Frankie and I wanna get this pot up, because I reckon it's gonna be full of crays. Certainly loving today's conditions, really nice. Sort of a light to moderate easterly and apparently 44 degrees, so a hot day. Got to like the grapnel, makes life easy. All right, this pot hauler, the stress-free brand, I bought one maybe a couple of years ago, and it's the best bit of investment ever. I mean, at the end of the day, you can get all different types of sort of capstans and tippers and whatnot, but this one here I like because at the end of the season, or once I've got a fair few craze, I can actually just pull it out of the actual rod holder, store it away, and the boat's nice and neat. And this thing is really quick. It's 30 metres a minute. However, if I actually want to make it go slower, I can put it on this one here, which is basically for low down torque, and I can make it winch up slower if I want to. About there, mate. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, the pot's just there. I'm gonna turn off the motor. So everything's all waterproof on this stress-free pot hauler. Now what you do is you lock in your rope to this rope locker, just bites in tight like that. And the actual weight base at the end of the pot as well helps bite it in. Okay, that's nice and secure. That's the best thing about using this particular winch here. I can do it all by myself, that easy. So pulling basic cray pots by hand is a lot of hard work, especially in the deeper water. But this tool here, obviously I can do it all solo, easy as. Now, just gonna lean over, pull up the cray pot. Yeah, it's good. Now I can do it by myself, but whilst I've got Frankie here, hey Frank, do you want to come over mate, give us a hand. Grab either, either side of that, on the count of three. One, two, three. There you go on the gun, we'll leave it there. Oh, thanks for your help mate. Now there's a few craze in there. Best thing about it, I think Frankie's pot's been in the water for only maybe four or five days, been rebaited. Lately we've been pulling up some pots that have got 25 to 30 in, sometimes only eight or 10. Crayfish nonetheless, what I'll do is I'll uh, get on the deck, open up the side gate, and give you a close look at the craze. All right, there's a few good ones in there. All right. There's a reason why I'm wearing an apron, the commercial guys use it, keep yourself clean. Best thing about it, doesn't matter, you get the bait smell, seaweed, off the rope, a lot of gunk, doesn't matter, you stay clean. You can go fishing straight after pulling the pots, or even go to work if you want to, and you're nice and clean. What I'll do now is I'll come down and show you the side gate. To me, side gate is a must to help basically dump out your crayfish, but often you'll get wobbygons in there, you'll get Port Jacksons, all sorts, and basically it's a lot easier to get them out. So what you do is you tip, like that there. That's certainly some decent crayfish there. Now what I'm gonna do first up is show you, now that was one very big crayfish. It is a bit unfortunate sometimes around obviously a lot of good uh, grounds that hold crayfish, hold octopus. So they do go in there sometimes and smash up your crays, but just the way it is. Now, only happens every so often that is, 
Now, I'm gonna probably go for the biggest one right there. What I normally do is basically often sometimes put the side gate down on top of the crays just so they don't move around too much. Look at that. That's one big female cray. Now you can tell obviously she's female, obviously, by under here, the swimmerettes, basically, and normally have little claspers. Basically those ones there is obviously for holding their eggs. In this case, she's got eggs. Normally when it's rich sort of orange colour, obviously very fertile, she'll be starting to shed the eggs very soon. And also being a female, it's got this one here. It's called tar spot. Basically, that's the male sperm being attached to the female. What she does is she uses her legs here and actually wipes off the actual tar spot onto the underneath there so she can actually then fertilise herself. So tar spot, she uses her legs, basically wipes onto the actual sea toes area, she eggs up. I'm no expert, I'll be honest with you, when it comes to crayfish, but that's to my full understanding. But anything that's basically tar spot, sea toes, sea toes being very hairy, Okay, so very hairy under here, uh, you'll get to see it. And also you can check out the fisheries website as well. It shows you in detail. And also eggs. So eggs, throw it back. Hairy sea toes, little feelers under here. Or tar spot, must go back in the water ASAP. To find out more information about Fishing WA or just want to ask a question, like us on Facebook. <laughs>
risk of damaging your boat, thinking it's going to come too fast, let it slip. Turn it off. Put it back into the actual rope locker, like that. And there you go. Hands free, you're stress free. They really are a great company to deal with. So glad I actually brought one, because I'll tell you one thing, I've never enjoyed cray potting so much, especially in this deeper water. Oh, this is quite heavy, Frank. You want to come and give us a hand, mate? Count of three. One, two, three. Nice. Not bad. We'll uh, get them out and give you a close look. All right, let's dump these suckers out, mate. Doing all right, your two pots. My two next. LR fresh crayfish. Woohoo! Throughout Fishing WA TV series, you've seen us use the Extreme gear. Let me show you just some of the products. We've got the Extreme PE braid, very well priced, from Brim braid all the way through to Jewfish, awesome stuff. We've got the Extreme hooks, from Skippy size all the way to Jewfish, Snapper, you name it, ultra sharp, ultra strong. We've got the metal slice, everyone loves the metal slice there. From herring all the way up to Taylor salmon size, great product. You always need leader, the extreme leader. From low poundage all the way up to the heavy stuff there for offshore deep water fishing. If you're chasing jewfish or snapper, bolch and groper, the octo jig and the metal jig, all different sizes, different colours, this will get you a lot of reef fish and out of the rods. The Fishing WA Extreme range is huge, from squidding to bottom bouncing, to trolling, to poppering, to jigging, you name it, we've got it. Very well priced, ultra light. Check them out at your nearest Extreme Tackle retailers or check them out online, extremetackle.com.au. All right, make sure this doesn't tip over, keep that out of the way. Now, time to gauge. Now, Often people say to me, back in my tackle store, I've heard about whites and reds, what's the difference? Basically reds are your residential, your whites are the ones that migrate. So they basically start from the beach, they go all, all the way out to the shelf, which is generally around about say 80 fathoms, around about sort of uh, say 160 to 200 metres of water. So your whites migrate, the reds normally are residential, this one here is a red, thanks Frankie. And you can see basically it's quite dark red in colour, right? I'll gauge it in a sec there. Now if I was to actually show you a white, which I'll grab down here, that there is a white, you can see it. They call it white because often it is very sort of pale white colour. In this situation, basically that's a red, that's a white. Gone a little bit sort of tingy red, but that is a difference. So that's a white, that's a red. Both very good eating. Normally the Japanese market, they prefer the reds, but it doesn't make any difference at all. Very nice. In the meantime, time to gauge you. Just do this very quickly. That's well and truly, always double check it both sides. So that way, 76. This way, over 76. That's legal. It's female with no hairy, so no sea toes, no tar spot. Show you why I snap off the feelers later. Tail fin. Often if they kick a little bit and they get in your way and you're trying to check the sex of them, put them into the crape like that there, wedge them like that. That way you can check the sex without them actually kicking up there and smacking in the face there. So easy way to check the sex. Clean. And if you're trying to rip the tail off, put them against the pot as well like that there. A lot easier. Okay, thanks Frankie. Clean male. Well, cray season is such a big hype. It's amazing how many cray pots I sell through my shop. Cray gear in particular, it's so popular. And they are beautiful eating, full of protein. No wonder why it's such a huge market for West Australian rock lobster. Thanks mate. That's a good one. That's a big male. Two dublackies. Clean male. It's nice clean colour. Well and truly, look at that. Over legal size. Still gauge them. The tail fin. Oh that one's a little bit tough. Okay, if you're gonna kick like that, here's the cray pot. Done. Beautiful. These legs here are full of meat as well, so you can basically boil them up or put them into a, a, a wok, steam them up. Beautiful. And a nice red. You're a male, you're clean. Well and truly over 76. 
So the whites are starting to walk. Now, the whites start walking around about, so the season starts now, it's come early, October the 15th. It used to be November the 15th, now it's October the 15th. And basically the season started early, so the whites are just starting to walk now, around sort of December into January, it's the main time period. And once the whites go, you do get a few stragglers, but mainly these ones here, the reds. Very nice, I like that size, best eating size. Get rid of that tail fin. Now, come on. You're allowed basically eight of these. So eight per licensed angler. So important to have your fisheries license. So eight per angler, and based on your boat, you can have three licensed worth. So you can have 24 crayfish for three people, three licenses on board. Today is two licenses, so 16. Thank you, Frank. Harry, you're missing out. Every year you ask me for a couple of crayfish for Christmas. Guess what, you're gonna miss out. You're not helping me out, Frank is. You better gauge that one quickly. I know it's legal. Yep, 76. Frankie and I are gonna eat well. Once again, Harry's gonna miss out. Snap off that filler. Look at that. Yum o. Have a look at that uh, in the esky. What a nice colour. Now that's a nice looking esky, full of colour, mainly whites, few reds. And the best thing about it, still got two pots to go. Now I'm about to set my pot again. So important to have your cray pot the right spot, i.e. the right ground, a small bit of ground right there. Now that is what I'm talking about. Have a look at that. Quality one metre lump. One metre can hold all those crays before. It's amazing, so important to spend the time don't just drop the pot anywhere. It could be a reef ledge next to sand or a small little lump or a little bit of coral fluff. Spend the time, make sure you put the pot in the right area, and you too will get results like me. Okay, now that may seem like a lot of rope, but it's so important to make sure you do have extra rope. So I'm in, say, 35 metres of water. I've got about 50 metres of rope, so it's 15 metres roughly of leeway. So if you're in 20 metres of water, you want, say, about 30. If you're in 35, you want around about 50 metres, so always have leeway, because as soon as the pot hits the water, you're gonna have some sort of current push. So it may sound silly to have 50 metres in 35, but it's gonna slant down. So the cray pot's here, the rope slants with a bit of sea and swell and push. So make sure you have excess rope, that way you'll catch more crays, guaranteed. Now you can see there's a lot of seaweed growth right now. It's because obviously my pot's been in the water for a long time, it's usual, but what I normally do is basically just bring out a cheap scourer, give them a bit of a rub down, and at the end of the season, put them in a, basically a big tub of chlorine, gets rid of all that sort of weed, algae, weed growth, and ready for next season. Well, that sea breeze hasn't come in yet. The forecast is actually right for once, and Crays just get better and better. With two licenses, we'll add 16. The way we're going so far with Frankie's two pots, well, I think we're home in hose. How good is this? Now, just before we put it on the ground there, Frankie, what I want to do is show everyone back at home why you get so excited about pulling pots. It's this the, the feelers, the colour of white and red. Oh, and have a look at that back at home. That is just what I call fairly loaded as a cray pot. I don't know, there's what, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know, maybe about 10 or 12 crays in there. One real big one, which you look like a male, so you're definitely a keeper. How good is this? Third pot, I'm about to bag out, I reckon. How good is this? This year we are giving away $2,000 worth of extreme tackle, as well as a Bradley six rack smoker valued at $1,200. To enter, all you have to do is like us on Facebook. All right, now that's a good pot there, my friend. That is a good pot. All we'll do is we'll put this one back on top of the gunnel, mate. Just shake out those last ones. Here, mate, go vertical. Shake them out, top of the gunnel. Now that, my friend, is the right kind of colour I'm looking for. Reds and whites, that one is a fairly big one. They call them a jimmy, not a jumbo, but close to it. Mate, thank you very much. Harry, you're missing out. Have a look at that for size. Hope it doesn't kick out of my hands. There you go. That's a solid red. That's a big cray. Now these legs are full of meat. The bigger they are, 
thicker they are, that there, tonight, I'll snap those off, put them in the wok. Beautiful, absolutely. I know my mate Frankie loves eating those big legs. Now you, my friend, I don't even have to gauge you, but I'll show you back at home just how big it is. 76 mil legal minimum size length. Hey, right, gentle. That's well and truly a big one. So I'm gonna rip off that tail and throw that one in the esky. There you go, bad boy. All right, this one here is also over 76. And there you go, tail ripped off. Oh, we'll do that now, and this is 16, two bag limits. We've got Frank to do a quick check, so important to do anything right by fisheries. They're always at the ramp. Don't risk obviously getting a fine. So that's our 16, but what I want to do, but is rebait this pot, but my second pot. So I'm going to pull it up, no doubt judging on obviously today's efforts, it'll be crazy in there. Release some more, rebait, ready for next time. And Frankie, thanks mate. These ones here are legal size as well, but got to throw them back. It's as simple as that. Your lucky day is my friend. Well, to say I'm stoked is an understatement. You spend the money, you get a good pot. This one here. Basically is a uh, full Jarrah frame, pine slats. Now I've got the actual Jarrah base. You can get steel base, being a fiberglass boat, I prefer the Jarrah base, but steel base is very good as well. It's got a side gate, so quality pot, getting quality craze. What's interesting as well, and I always talk about Orange Ruffies being such a good bait because the bones keep on leaking out oil. Now this has been, say, roughly 12 days. Okay, 12 days, nearly two weeks, and that's all I've got in the bait basket. All I've got for nearly two weeks is that holding all those craze. So it just goes to show you how important it is having the right bait. So Orange Ruffy in particular is my favorite, only because often I leave the pots out for a long time. You pull the pots all the time. Blue mackerel's good, tuna head's good, but you can't argue with the proof. Quick rebate, put them back in the water, this place is going off.